Hi everyone, welcome to a new video and this time a different format, video format. I hope you're not too confused. And um, today I just want to talk a little bit about an, an extraordinary sample library I've recently discovered and it's called uh, Pripyat Pianos. And actually Pripyat is the city which is closest to um, the, the nuclear power plant of Chernobyl, so basically where the tragedy happened. And it's within that radius of abandoned places. So the team, uh, the sample develop, developer team Strix Instruments, they went to these places, I think to the city mainly, and also to the um, nuclear power plant. And they recorded not only pianos, all the pianos they could, found, they could find inside the city, but also impulse responses. And uh, if you are not re um, familiar with what uh, impulse responses are, it's basically, um, let's say, audible reverb information you can apply to a dry signal. And so basically that dry signal or that audio recording sounds as if it was played back or recorded inside that room. Okay, so... Um, let's just hop right into the library. You find a lot of stuff you can you can play with. And I just want to go over all these little things because they matter, especially matter on this library because it's, I, I see it from a more from a sound design-ish point of view um, rather than just a classical piano library. <clears throat> so let's start uh, below here with the details. You have like the release. And if you hover over it, you don't see it right now, but usually you're used to it. For when working with contact, um, when you hover over something, you see like a little explanation below. So I'm partly reading stuff when I just stare at the screen or something. So um, the release obviously controls the release sample. So when you uh, release a key, so you can adjust the volume individually. And when I just play a key, and I'm releasing the key, you probably hear a little bit of the microphone bleeding. Um, but let's move this up and so you hear that noise in the back. So these are basically what happens, what sound it makes, what sound a piano creates when you release the samples. Um, also, the next one would be the key, the, the, the sound of the key. I mean, if you hit a key and you record it close enough, you have obviously a sound. Uh, I mean, not when the finger hits the key, but when the key is being pressed down. So you see it when I hear it when I turn it down a little bit. So you have a kind of a little bit of a percussion element to it. Okay, so next would be the pedal. I got a sustain pedal below my desk. And when I hit this one, I just move it up so you hear it in all details. So this is not my wooden floor down here. It's it's the sound of the of the pedal itself when you press the pedal, which would be below a, p a piano. Okay, so now in the very bottom when I mean if you play piano you know but obviously uh, but maybe there is someone listen to this and who does, isn't familiar with piano so this is the sound the pedal makes when you press the pedal down so you already got another percussion kind of element you know to the pianos the next one would be the damper and this is when you just release the damper or when you press the pedal basically I'm not even sure which way around, but when you press the pedal, you, the damper moves up, so you hear all strings resonating, vibrating some, something, uh, uh, somehow. So when you... Let's move the pedal down, the, the volume. So this is the sound the strings make once you move the damper up, because they just um, vibrate and move around and do these weird noises. So when you put it up with a pedal... To, Okay, so I don't want to key, uh, um, spend too much time with all these little things. The next would be um, 
the controls the volume this this uh sympathetic resonance controller here this controls let me just read it for you controls the volume of special layer that contains sympathetic strings resonance and strings artifacts so i just move this up and when i play a few keys here So this is basically like some kind of overtones and noises the strings make when they just... So this all... That's cool. That's really cool. So you can, you know, put all these things together and just create some really eerie stuff. Let me just play a little bit. Please bear with me. I'm not a piano player, but I just try my... So you got all this noise in the back, all these things happening, which can be pretty cool because all these little details, you know, create so much, um, so much, so much atmosphere. And the next thing we see here is the distance. So this is basically pretty obvious. The distance is close right now and far distance. So uh, close, medium and far. So this is basically the distance, the recorded distance of the piano itself. So it sounds further away, closer and closest. So to be honest, I didn't really check all these details. So it's basically just when the lid is open or closed. You can also trim the key. Or actually the note. The next thing is the convolution, the, 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 the impulse responses. And you can turn these off and on. So this is just the piano itself. Convolution on. So you have some more controls here, which is actually the pre delay, which is actually the distance. Um, the reverb is traveling depending on how far it is away from a wall. Okay, so see it like a ping pong when you hit like, but not the table, but the wall. And it depends on how long, how much time the reverb needs to bounce back or until it reaches the wall. And um, So it's basically if the wall would be further away, there would be the bounce back would be later on of the reverb. Okay, and if it's closest, it's right there. Then you can also uh, scale the convolution. So you just, just improve it to like, or move it up to like 150%.
so you can have just a little bit, just in case you want to dial in just a little bit of details of the room, of the, of the impulse response. Or you want to have a lot of it. So let's just check um, the impulse responses itself because there is a lot of stuff going on here. And before we do that, there is this big slider. You probably asked, why didn't he do that with the biggest numbers on the whole screen? You know, so basically this is the age knob and the age knob is basically, um, you can just drag it, click it with your mouse and just drag it up all the way to 2019. And the more you already see it on the graphics, so this was done pretty cool. The more it moves up, the more, or the, or the older, the pianos will become. So this is basically what happens. The more detuned they sound. So they actually, they just don't sound detuned. They just also move around a little bit. So let me just play something else. So pretty detuned actually. Okay, so now let's go basically to the main part, which is actually all the different convolutions. So you have this, uh, we had this, um, this Azure swimming pool active. So we were playing all the time in that in that pool, basically. Now let's try something else. So let's go to this Azure um, basketball court. And then it sounds completely different. Let's let's just move it up the, the intensity, basically, of the convolution. And just um, play it in exchange. So of course there's a lot of more reverb going on because a swimming pool is probably bigger. Well, I'm not sure basically, but the whole thing, you know, it's it's like you have like some noise dampening, um, you know, elements. Even if they are destroyed, they are just, um, you know, dampening the reverb a little bit bigger, better than probably like these tiles here. So um, the music school hall. Try a little bit more Prometheus movie theater. I mean, you could basically tell a whole story about each of these places. So it's, it's kind of like a shame that I'm just going or hopping through like this, but. Um, I mean, you could read all these, for example, from this cafe, the striking stained glass of the windows remains largely intact and with a low afternoon sun breaking through the trees, it's an impressive sight. 33 years on from the disaster, the cafe sits just outside what's left um, of the barbed 
the barbed wire fence that now encircles Pripyat. And they also have the level of gamma radios currently going on. So it's like 2.55 uh, sievert or micro sievert. Mm, uh, I think this is, I'm not that much of a um, scientist, but I think it's micro sievert or something. So they have like a little story um, of each of these places. Let's move on to the middle school three class. hallway let's detune it for a moment So you can write some, I mean, you could, you know, it's it's all about how creative you are. But I feel that this stuff, um, that this um, library is like really inspires me to go for the eerie stuff. And to be honest, I mean, I, I never said uh, in front of a, like a, you know, like a typical classical piano library, if I, if I test around with pianos at all. But I never felt like trying all this eerie and detuned stuff. And um, yeah, so this is pretty inspiring, actually. Uh, I mean, as much as tragic the event was, but I mean, this is just here. This library is just here and has been created. And it really inspires to, to, to write um, kind of, you know, thoughtful and um, haunting and eerie music. So this is actually the, the convolution reverb of a kindergarten. So you hear all the details. I actually behave a little bit like that key, uh, that, like that guy, you know, the, the sound design video where that guy stands on a frozen lake and he's just moving that little pebble and suddenly you hear that pew, pew, pew sound and he's completely astonished. So sorry, but <laughs> I'm acting a little bit like this now because um, you hear all these details in the back and... and all the noise going on of these different rooms. So let's head on to the bookstore. So this has a completely different reverb tail. And let's find something which is a little bit more um, an apartment. Okay, let's try some more. Piano, um, sorry, the, the apartment. 
Now we have the building, the staircase. There should be something going on here. Let's fool around with these elements too. Let's move them all up. So you could use this as some kind of percussion element. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit of a percussion nerd, so you probably noticed. And let's move on. Lenin Square. This is basically the Palace of Culture and Hotel Policia. 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 I am pronouncing it probably all wrong. Are located directly at Pripyat Center Square, Lenin Square. Let's move this all back so you... Move on. Policia Hotel. Move on a little bit more. Let's try another one. Palace of Culture. So I had the vol volume turned down a little bit, so we obviously missed some. Move on a little bit more. Palace of Culture Boxing Ring. And so to be honest, I was I was moving through all these impulse responses before, and there was one which was really haunting, and it is probably at the very back somewhere. I think this was it. I had this look again. <laughs> There's kind of some slapback happening. There was like a, um, um, a, a huge wall or something, which was like a glass wall or something. So it's actually two. have to be a little bit careful so I'm not activating uh, Studio One, my sequencer, you know, and start recording something <laughs> and fooling around with it 
and writing a full track. Um, let's head over there. We have the medical unit concert hall. cooling tower. Here we go. Now you can really write some weird stuff with that one. If I only could play piano. <laughs> so that it So it's whirling around a lot in the background. Crazy. Let's move on a little bit before I get lost. Okay, wow. So they really recorded close to um, the reactors um, on the nuclear power plant. So let's just listen how these sound. Let's dial this back to. Just scale this up a little bit. No, it's not the pre-delay. But it's actually some pre-delay happening at the at this place. So you can actually fool around a little bit with this by dialing the the uh, pre-delay. I mean, um, um, delaying the pre-delay, the making it a little bit longer, and playing with the sound you hear. So you can probably just as an example. So it's of kind of some, well, let's say organic delay. So you don't have to artificially plug in, uh, dial in a plug-in and um, fool around with it. So you get some sort of which is baked in the sound. Okay, so um, let's check out the final um, the final three ones here. So you got the Jupiter Factory Workshop. Okay, there's quite some reverb action going on. So where's my pedal down here?
move these up a little bit. So you could really use the pedal as some sort of, I uh, mentioned that before, but using these all these sounds, these these uh, artifacts as um, some sound design-ish elements, you know. Uh, let's move on. Then we have the Jupiter Factory Corridor. Let's scale, scale this up a little bit more. And the last one is actually the core chamber of Reactor 5. So the construction of two partially completed reactors, number 5 and 6, was suspended immediately after the accident at the number 4 reactor and was eventually cancelled in 1989. Um, 1989, yeah. So there's this funny swirling sound. I know it sounds weird to, you know, we humans always tend to look for patterns or anything, but it almost sounds uh, machinery, you know, that there is some kind of machinery. It sounds a little bit like a flanger or something is going on. Okay, so um, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope that you could, you know, explore this library a little bit with me. And again, if you want to know more about all, um, I just checked the website because there's a lot of information going on, actually not just how they record it, but also on uh, Pripyat itself or the nuclear power plant. And it's actually a very great or cool library in the sense of not you know because of the of the of the of the tragedy but it's very inspiring seriously if you look for something haunting and you want to you sit down at night or at late evening like i do right now and you just want to come up with something haunting and this is definitely this is definitely um um yeah a great library to have because it's just you know, if you get a little bit, I'm I'm like that guy. You know, when you, when you, when I'm <clears throat> starting to play a video game or I'm about to visit a, um, the cinema and watching a movie or something, or actually get into a library, it's always nice to hear a little story around it. You know, because we we humans are, you know, there is nothing better than a story. It's actually simply what it is, and it it works for all kinds of things. So we always feel connected to two stories and this is what actually this library tells so i really like it a lot and um so again i hope you really enjoyed this video and if you got any questions comments uh, just put them in the link below and 
Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.